Hey y'all, what's going on? Top of Bear here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Epic Adventures. Uh, so today, I'm going to talk about racism on the trail. Uh, yeah, it's a real messed up topic to talk about, but you know what? I'm going to talk about it because I experienced it. Uh, part of the reason why I'm talking about this topic isn't because I'm trying to sit there and get viewed. The reason that I'm talking about this topic is because one current event and what's going on in regards to police being called on African American, male and female, that are doing the daily things or normal things that we normally do throughout life, i.e. go to the pool, walking while black, driving while black. Well, actually those two have been the norm. But anyway, um, what else? Uh, sitting out, sitting in your car while waiting on someone while black. <laughs> you guys cutting the grass while black, selling water bottle while black. You know, you guys can sit back and do the research yourself. But either way, that with the fact that my wife went to the African American Museum with my son uh, and went to the Emmett Till exhibit, and she called me crying in tears because no matter how you look at it, the Emmett Till situation, um, take color aside, he is a child and she was a mother. And imagine if someone took away your child, no matter what age, he is. You gave birth to him. You carried him. You raised him. You instilled everything that was about you in him. So, yeah, my wife was calling me and she couldn't fathom how someone could do this, despite the fact she knew about the story of Emmett Till. Okay? And lastly, but not least, is the fact that I've actually experienced racism on the trail. Now, some of you guys thinking, how could this be? It happens. Uh, as an African American male, we are prejudged. Okay, actually, let me take that back. People prejudge everybody. I would say, as an African American male, I probably see it more than anything else, especially when I'm in a predominantly white arena, which is backpacking, hiking, outdoor, outdoor activities, and I'm one of few African Americans that are hanging around individuals, and I can hold evidence to that based on what I'm about to tell you. So here we go. So when I hit the Trey Foot Mountain Trail, okay, thus allowing me to go to the Black Rock Summit, stay at the Black Rock Hut, I had three separate incidents of racism that I experienced all in the same day, like I said before. And <clears throat> the first incident was while I was on Trey Foot, I ran into these two white girls. And in my mind, and what I was thinking is that, hey, I can get these guys on film because I'm doing a video, because yeah, I'm a YouTuber. And I think it's cool when you show the outdoor community, despite the fact that you may be a day hiker, or a weekend warrior, or a through hiker. I actually like the fact of doing it. I think it's, it's it, it, it brings um, legitimacy to your channel, to your videos. Um, and so, as I'm walking, and keep in mind, uh, I have a backpack on, it's about 46 pounds. Keep in mind, gotta do my spin for the dog, that um, I got all this gear on, and I come up and I say hi. It's like, hey, how you guys doing? And I'm very joyous, I'm very ch you know, cheering. Um, I try not to come off rude. I think I have a very spontaneous, spunky, charismatic personality. And when the girls saw me, when the ladies saw me, they look startled. Now, I'm walking towards them. They're walking towards me. So, I don't see how startled you could be the fact that you see something moving and, and, and this person talks. And we're about maybe, hmm, hmm, 15 yards away. And I, I see them. I'm like, hey, how you guys doing? And they look, like I said before, startled. So, I, you know, I'm... I'm warming up to them. I'm like, you know, maybe I, you know, maybe they were in their head. Because when you hike, sometimes you get in your head and then something just, you know, distracts you from, you know, your, your, your train of thought. And so I start talking to them and I'm like, hey, how you doing? How was the hike? How was the summit? What's, you know, what's up ahead? Blah, 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 blah. And one of the girls was very standoffish, you know, very, very, very standoffish. And I'm just like, okay, that's fine. She's standoffish. I understand, you know, not everyone wants to talk. But then the second girl, 
really didn't want to interact with me all that much. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I kind of get it. I understand I'm a male. Maybe, you know, as a male, not as a black male, but as a male, I am um, scaring them. So with that being said, when I got that vibe, one of the things I did is that I managed their expectation. Meaning that it was my response to make sure that they had a pleasant interaction with me. Because the last thing I wanted was them saying something that I sexually assaulted them, I raped them, or some of that BS crap that goes on out there, okay? Now, not taking away from women that, that have been raped. I dated a girl that used, that not used to be, but had been raped. And so, um, I move on. I don't think twice about it. I, I, I kept the conversation limited as possible the best way I could but at the same time g-rated so that way there's no issues that come from the situation and so I continue on with my hike now something I didn't mention is that earlier in my hike when I first got started I ran to this other white woman and she and I hit it off great I can't remember her name off the top of my head it eludes me because <clears throat> it's it's July now and I did this thing I think this back in like February March or some crap like that so it eludes me and um and I saw her get to the top of the mountain and we ended up having a great conversation. I actually filmed her and that, that was all, you know, all she wrote. You can't get no better than that. That was excellent. So now I'm coming off the summit of Trayfoot. I'm going to Black Rock Summit. And as I'm making my approach to Black Rock Summit, I, I hear um, voices from a family. And I want to say it's a family of four, which I was correct. Because I hear, you know, a, a daughter, Olsen, don't you dare. I hear a daughter, I hear a father, I hear a mother, and I also hear a son. And when I get up there, um, I'm walking at the summit, and I see the boy come out of nowhere. And as a parent, one of the first things that I think about is the child's safety. Because I know for a fact that if you're not careful at Black Rock Summit, there's a possibility you could fall off the side of the mountain, okay? And so when I saw the boy and I didn't hear anyone else, I became very, very concerned. Um, a parent first, I've always done this ever since I've had my son, Baby Bear. And we're gonna get to spin again. Come on, buddy. And um, so I'm, 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 I'm walking, keeping an eye out, just to be on the safe side, because I don't hear it, I don't hear his parents. All I see is him. And sometimes kids don't know how to communicate very well to adults. And I've been in a situation where I helped a kid that lost his, his his mom and his mom and father, and he sat there for like 15 minutes and no one noticed him but me because I was being attentive, like that kid's by himself. So I waited just to be sure that hey, his parents ain't dipped in or some crap like that before I approached. Plus I had my wife with me and we both were paying attention. So <clears throat> I've been in situations like that where, guys, spin again, <laughs> bugs, where, um, yeah, I understand and I know what to do when it comes to helping kids. And so I'm walking, my pace slows down a little bit. I'm filming, but I'm not filming in the direction of the kid. Oh, spider, industry. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm filming in the direction of the kid, and what you doing, Olsen? Man, it's hard trying to do a video and walk with the dog. Like, they're stopping for every little thing, I tell you, man. So where was I? Hmm, forgot my chain of thought. Anyway, I just start where I think I left off. So anyway, um, I'm slowing down. I'm, I'm paying attention. I'm looking for the, the kid's family because I don't hear them. It's quiet. And the boy just looks at me as if he didn't seen, you know, death. And I'm just like, huh okay okay it's registering and so out of nowhere you know as i'm getting ready to make the decision of okay i need to intervene the mama pops out Boom, there's mama i'm like okay cool sweet there's mom and she looks at me as if i'm a straight threat as if i was going to attack her son now i want to keep in mind though when i was making the assessment of should i intervene and help the boy out i was still walking forward i was still looking forward but, in, but I had like a scanning type of view where I'm looking at the side of my eye, my head kind of canted, and I glance and I look and I'm like, okay, yeah, uh, okay. Do I have the number to emergency medical and all this other stuff? And that's how I'm holding myself. And that's how I'm presenting myself. She looks at me and I know she calls over to her husband and her husband pops this head out and he looks at me and I'm just like, hmm. 
well, I see how that's gonna go. And I just kept moving on. So that's two. The third one was after I literally just left Black Rock Summit. I'm on my way to the shelter and in front of me was another was another hiker. Now at the time I thought it was a man based on how that individual was walking but I was wrong it was a woman. We get to the junction where there's a sign of Black Rock Shelter and what's down there is two other women. They, they're like hey so and so how you doing and then they get quiet and they look up at me as if I did something wrong and I'm looking and I'm just like ah oh, here we go again. It's like the third time today that I've got the stairs and I'm just like crap what the hell. So I, me, I move on. Well, one of the things I've learned is you put them at ease. You make them relax. You control the expectation of the individuals around you. So that way they don't have a, a, a very negative experience with you. It's something that August talked about in one of his videos. If I can find I don't know if you noticed, but I was the only black person in that whole sea of tourists and whatnot. I think I saw one Mexican um, or Hispanic, but... But that's what it is. I mean, especially down south. But I guess it really didn't change. You go north since I've done the whole trail. Actually, uh, in Maine, in 2005. And I went 2005. This was back in the 90s. So we, I'll, I'll just leave the story out. But at any rate, I'm always cognizant, right? I see the stairs and whatnot. I try to be in and out, causing no panic. Just do my thing, all right? So that's just one thing. Being being a minority of in hiking a trail. Even when you go through towns, when you go through Gatlinburg, Helen, Franklin, you will stand out. I mean, there's just no way around it. Hence the military guard. I've been out the military for years, but if I'm hiking, if I'm coming down here in the public's eye, Tennessee, pretty much Yankee territory, however you want to call it, I'm going in as a soldier, all right? Because especially if you're trying to hitch and stuff, all you're going to see is a black dude. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm very cognizant of my dress. And I'm very cognizant of my surroundings. And when people start to stare and whatnot, I try to be in and out so I don't linger too much. Um, but this is about the trail, though, okay? So you, you got to take the good with the bad. I don't, can't say I've had many bad experiences, but at the same time, I have to keep, I have to keep their experience sanitary. Does that make sense? Nobody want to walk around and be like, what is he doing here? You know? I know it sounds crazy, but... You have you have a you gotta take responsibility for everything, their experience as well as mine. Out right. here. What ended up happening is uh, I said hi, being very cordial. It's like, hey, how you doing? Blah 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 blah. Like, hey, how long have you guys been hiking? Uh, where are you guys coming from? All this other stuff. And then you know, in return, I was like, oh, I'm coming from here. I just did the loop, and I, I'm sleeping here tonight at the shelter. Blah 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 blah. And even after saying that, they still seemed. Um, not easy with me being around. You know, they still came off as, do we really trust this person? And don't get me wrong, I don't expect anyone to trust anybody when you first meet them, okay? But it's three of them, one of me, I have a backpack on, just like they do, and I'm not coming that far from behind them. So I'm just like, okay, cool, it is what it is. So, one of the females that I was talking to or I was able to get her to talk to me, um, I kind of like did an initial like, okay, this black guy is not gonna harm me, so I'm okay to keep talking to him. And so once I established the initial contact, I um, broke initial contact and I gave them their, their space. All I wanted them to do is not to freak out because last thing I wanted is them pulling a gun on me if they happen to have a gun on me because let's get for real, you can have guns. and. Um, um, national parks and I didn't have a gun with me and so I'm like yeah okay I just want to make sure they don't try to shoot me I'm good to go and I break contact with them and I let them have their distance um, while I was going to the shelter <clears throat> and so we get to the shelter and at the shelter there is uh, one retired couple and another white guy for a national and I can't remember his name I wish I could but I can't and so they the three women had no issues interacting with those three. Um, but however, they had a problem interacting with me. Now let me drive home the point of what I'm trying to say. Um, I get there and I talk to the, the, the retired couple and I talk to the one foreign national guy and we had like we were we had in-depth conversations 
to the point that I was talking to the retired woman about her son that served in the army. And I, I said, oh, tell your son, thank you for his service, blah, blah, blah. And she's explained to me how her son came back from Afghanistan and he wasn't the same and that the PTSD, you know, is messing with him and all this other stuff. And she starts to feel guilty because, you know, she was all for her husband going into, I mean, excuse me, her son going into service, didn't have any objection to it. And she felt like she sent her son to his death. Now, me being me, I come back and I said, no, you're wrong. You didn't do that. If anything, your son was one of the strong ones that was able to make it out because of what you instilled in him. He kept the motivation, the drive, and the determination to make it home to you. And he might not be all there, but you know what? He survived, and you're able to see him another day. And by me um, saying that, she she thanked me. I'm going to say it like that. She thanked me. And so, again, we continue talking. A uh, fourth white guy that was retired from the Navy Reserve uh, came to the shelter. He did 20 miles that day, y'all. Day one, 20 miles. I thought he was crazy, but you know what? He was he, he was real thin. He was, in, he was in good shape for his age. And so um, he um, came to the shelter, and me and him had... I had an in-depth conversation, and there was no issues there. Now, the entire time that I'm talking to those four individuals, the three ladies that I came in with, okay, with significant distance, still kept their distance from me. They still didn't want to interact with me. They still didn't want to hold conversation with me. The one lady that I spoke to at the initial time, um, to put their mind at ease, she would talk to me, but it wasn't, um, it was more like, can statements you know what I'm saying simple things to end the conversation so not wanting to sleep in a location where there's something like that presenting itself ie things could happen when I sleep at night I decided to FaceTime my wife because I had cell service I FaceTime my wife I spoke to her on FaceTime I put her on speaker so everyone can hear her and I spoke with her I did that for like five minutes and then from there I went back and I asked her to put my son on and he hops on the phone and he goes hey daddy you know as a child does when they're excited to see their father when that happened everyone laughed immediately from there the three white ladies did not see me as a threat and I noticed that the the, the tension based on that sh at that shelter wasn't as thick also this way sorry about that so yeah it does happen racism does happen on the trail luckily for me it was something simple as them not wanting to talk to me and I wasn't pressed to talk to them what I was concerned with is the fact is again, I don't have any weapons and I don't know what weapons they have. And again, it's me, the only black guy with seven of the white people at the shelter, spending again for the dog. And despite the fact that <clears throat> it was the three white girls that were there, you don't know what fear can do. Fear can cause a lot a lot of things um that's the reason why a cop shot a concealed carry holder that says hey i have a gun let me get my ccw it's the reason why a cop shot an armed black black man when he pulled him over the black guy's out of the car and he's like hey man what's going on and the cop's like hey man i pulled you over because you're speeding he's like oh, okay cool 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 and the cop goes hey i need your license and registration the, the black guy goes, okay, cool, no problem, I get that. And so the black guy turns around to go back in his car to grab his wallet. The white cop immediately turns around and says, don't reach in the car, grabs his pistol and shoots the black guy. It's all caught on dash cam. So, it's all something in the tree. So, with that being said, yeah, to me, based on my experience, 
totality situation and the training that I've given that was given to me for my family, that was racism. Very subtle racism. Not one to interact with me. Um, giving me that feel that, that I'm the threat. And so on and so forth. And it's not a proud moment in my life that I like to talk about. And again, I'm not doing this for views. I'm doing it because you guys out there, everyone, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, German, who, whoever, when you're interacting with a large group of people and the trail, on the trail, you have a large group of people, you need to understand and be aware of stuff like, stuff like that actually happened. If you um, logo, the black election, he experienced some crap on trail where they were accusing him of stealing because he was black. But he wasn't stealing anything. But however, there was a white guy, there was a white guy that um, was stealing. And they were too busy looking at Logo, but they didn't see the white guy stealing. Now Logo ain't no snitch, he ain't gonna tell on the mofo. But that right there is a perfect example of how um, the color of my skin, as I move through, um, or that, as I perform certain things, can sometimes be a, a hindrance to other, no, I'm not gonna say a hindrance. Can sometimes cause things to happen that don't need to happen. And don't get me wrong, since I've been doing this endeavor of being outdoors, I've had more white folks come to me and say, what you're doing with your son, I commend you. Because not too many people do that. They don't spend time with their kids. And you're one of the last fathers that are out there. Not black fathers, okay? Fathers that are out there doing this with their son to instill something in them. Okay? And so for me to experience this, um, yeah, I was mad in, in the beginning to the point that I called my wife and I had to talk to her about it. And I talked to my wife's friend about it too. Because I, I had to be sure that I wasn't tripping. But at the end of the day, I could only laugh because they're ignorant. And not ignorant as it regards them being mean or me saying it mean. They're ignorant because they don't know and they don't have the experience. And on that day that I had three incidents of experiencing that racism, I had six people that talked to me and we had a cordial interaction and we traded off knowledge and experience in that interaction. And I felt that, hey, they weren't judging me by the color of my skin, but more as my character for who I am. So, with that being said, you guys tell me what you think. Um, I'm not going to be mad if you say it's not racism, because guess what? Everyone has their opinion. And if I didn't want your opinion, I wouldn't be asking. So, please hit me up in the comment section below. Tell me what you think. Um... Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm smarter and I'm wiser now after a couple months of the situation happening. I'm not irritated. I'm more concerned for my son because I don't want him to be a statistic. I want him to grow up and be successful just like his father is. I want him to grow up and be a loving husband, a loving uh, a father, a loving um, cousin, uh, like grandson, like his father is. I want him to, to enjoy life, you know. You work hard, you put in work, you should be able to enjoy the benefits of that. So, again, please leave a comment below. Hmm. Let me know if you like this video by hitting that thumb, smashing it. Click it multiple times. Share it with your friends because um, education is critical. And overall, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Um, like I said, this is the topic that needs to be talked about. And for some of you guys out there, you may not be comfortable talking about this topic. That's okay. That's okay. There's a lot of things in the world that we're not comfortable with. But however, you gotta understand that um, if you don't talk about something, you will never talk about nothing. And then when something criti critical happens, you won't have the knowledge or experience to handle it. So with that being said, I am Papa Bear. I am going back to the house to give Olsen some water. Uh, we did one mile. That's good for him. We'll be a little pup up. With that being said, thank you very much for tuning in to Epic Adventures. I can't wait to see you guys outdoors. And as always, go hike yourself.